Tsubaku no Gara, or Gara of the Desert, is one of the better characters in Naruto. He has one of the best character growth arcs in the shonen anime genre. Going from a completely angsty edgelord to a responsible leader and one of the strongest ninja in the history of the series. Gara became a staple character in Naruto and one of the most beloved by the fans. However, today we're only going to be talking about Gara in the context of part one of Naruto. So really just the tuning exams until the end of the Sasuke retrieval arc. And how he relates to the lower moon five demon Rui from the series Demon Slayer. One last thing before we get started, if you haven't already, please subscribe, like the video, and hit the notification bell. I would really appreciate it a whole lot, and it would help the channel continue to grow. Thank you guys. Also, if you want to skip to uh, who I think will win in the fight part of the uh, video, I'll timestamp it here and put it in the description of the video to make it easier to find. And anyway, let's get started. How did I come up with the topic of this video? Well, I was rewatching Naruto the last couple of weeks, and I started to notice something when I was observing Gara. He has a very similar character arc to Rui from Demon Slayer. However, it's close to if Rui had lived after his battle with Tanjiro and Giyu. Gar is what Rui could have been, I should say. Okay, okay, I know that Rui is a demon. That's not really that possible unless he comes up on a Tamayo or something, but whatever. It took me down a rabbit hole when I was looking at these two characters. All right, next, let me lay out the groundwork of my thinking a bit. So both these characters have a similar motivation. They both want to become stronger, but their real motivation is to actually feel loved by the ones that are closest to them. In Gar's case, that was his father and his uncle. I'll give a quick backstory for both so you can get where I'm coming from with this. Gar's mother was killed during childbirth, which caused his uncle Yashimaru's hatred for him. This led to a failed assassination attempt orchestrated by Gar's father because the beast living within him was becoming too problematic and Gar could not control it well enough for it to be an asset at the time to the Hidden Sand Village. Whether Rasa hated Gar or not is up in the air, especially in part one. If I had to give my opinion on it, I would say he more than likely loved him, but saw him as a tool for the village. The tool was more important than his own selfish reasons as a parent, so he decided that the best decision for the village was to end the current Jin Chiriki's life, transfer Shikaku to another host, and start over, which is why he sent his uncle Yashimaru to delete him. Now on to Rui. Rui, as we find out, was a sickly child who could barely walk or do anything, really. One night, Muzan comes to his home and gives him the gift, quote unquote, <laughs> the gift of becoming a demon, I should say, after consuming his blood. And that's if he's considered to be a chosen one by Muzan's blood. After Rui is changed into a demon, he begins to get the hunger for humans. As Rui is growing day by day, he is becoming more and more problematic, in particular once his parents discover that he is no longer eating ramen and sushi, but instead he's devouring bodies. Next, the parents, well, in particular, the father decides Rui needs to be deleted. Notice the similarities. Like I said, I was really enjoying my rewatch slash reread of part one of Naruto, and it started to stand out more and more that Rui and Gara are actually two sides of the same coin. Specifically, Gara is what Rui's potential could have been if he had lived and switched over to the good guy side. What I want to talk about next is the techniques that they use. For Rui, his attacks all revolve around his spider web slash threads. The strings can be used defensively in the sense that he can uh, detach a body part. For example, when he fights Sanjiro, he detaches his head at the last minute to avoid it being sliced off by the uh, Hinokami Kagura. Not to mention all demons have an enhanced durability based on their strength level. This is showcased multiple times as the Nichiren Blade when facing a stronger demon will not be able to break the skin of their neck. Rui also is able to block as well as break Tanjiro's sword with a thread. When he attempted to attack him with uh, water breathing, switching to offensive abilities, Rui basically uses his web as an all-encompassing weapon. It can be expanded, retracted, and have its shape manipulated. His distinct attacks were from his uh, Blood Demon Art Thread Manipulation, and I'll list them off real quick. We have uh, Cutting Thread Cage, Murderous Eye Basket, and my favorite Cutting Thread Rotation, AKA gets dominated by the best de character in uh, Demon Slayer Giyu. <laughs> Rui is also able to control objects and even human bodies that are still alive. However, I do think this control requires a target to be weaker as someone stronger is just going to dispose of threads with the relative ease. I think it can sharpen the threads as well, but it's never really stated or implied if they are sharp when he cuts or sheet cakes somebody, or if it's just pure strength, and because of the size of the threads, it looks like a slice. Now, pivoting to Gar and his techniques. For his defensive capabilities, his sand, which is infused with his mother's essence or love, has an auto-response mechanism that stops all attacks from harming Gar. This is important because, as I said earlier, these two characters' true desires for the love or family bond that's missing. Even if an opponent can get past the defense, he can also coat his body in a highly dense sand. This allows him to tank hits from even the likes of Rock Lee's Hidden Lotus, obtaining no injuries besides a drain on his chakra. Though Rui's thick skin isn't exactly the same, 
it still serves the same purpose as being the uh, last line of defense for the character. Gar can also make a giant dome defense, which is pretty much impenetrable. It took an a rank ninjutsu from Sasuke to be able to get past the uh, defense. His Shukaku shield that's so strong that Kimimaro's spear cannot breach his defenses as well. Switching to attacks, and I don't want to make this too long. I'll give a condensed version since Gar has so many offensive abilities. He has a sand burial and sand funeral which wraps the user or a limb in sand and crushes the target. Sand shurikens, which are hardened sand shurikens tossed at high speed. He can also use the sand to seemingly suspend or fold himself or even a target into the air. Ironically, Rui did a suspension thing as well with his web when he was battling Nezuko and Tanjiro. Gara has sand tsunami, where he brings a giant wave of sand to completely cover the battlefield and bury any enemy in its wake. Okay, basically this dude got a lot of sand attacks. <laughs> Luckily, I'm, I'm only doing part one, so I don't have to go through all of his jutsu evolution through Shippuden as well. All right, to bring this part home, if you notice, both Rui and Gara are stationary fighters. They use their special element to defeat their foes. I would akin this to a, a like a mage archetype of a fighter. Both attack with their element in both short and long ranges. Physically, Rui probably is stronger because he soccer kicks. Uh, his soccer kicks do inflict some serious damage. I don't think Gar even throws a punch besides when he was fighting Naruto and his half possessed form uh, doesn't really count since it's uh, a tail beast enhanced or whatever you want to call it. Next, I want to talk about their personalities as well as their uh, mental state. Gara's personality in the context of Naruto in part one is wildly uh, unstable. This is due to the uh, sand spirit <coughs> that's living within him. Uh, yeah, not a Jin Cherokee in part one. But anyway, um, I'm assuming uh, he has self-induced insomnia because if he were to fall asleep, then Shukaku would take over his body. This chaotic nature is showcased multiple times throughout this part one of the series. Seemingly, the only thing that seems to give him a pleasure is deleting other people. Gara's mental state is often manifested as a severe personality disorder. His skewed uh, thinking is only the strong matter and uh, his goal is to eliminate anyone strong so that he can feel alive. Quote unquote. This becomes... Uh, a borderline obsession with Sasuke as he even attempts to kill him in the middle of his uh, Chidori training with Kakashi. For Rui, he has inherited uh, Muzan's demonic instinct, which means that everything he does is first driven by his desire for human flesh. This to me is similar to Gara's desire to delete people as well. When both of them destroy well in Rui ca Rui's case, when he eats, but um, they both become stronger because of this. Ninjas gain strength through battle and training. So technically, the more people guard defeats, the stronger he becomes. And demons and demon slayer gain strength from directly from uh, devouring humans or receiving more of Muzan's blood. Also, Rui's mental state is altered the older he gets, as he barely has any memory of his parents. And even then, up until his death, he's, his description of what happened is not very accurate. Rui is highly impatient, threatening to end his subordinates if they fail or if they take too long for whatever task he ha has given to them. He's also controlling and manipulative, believing the he can subjugate anyone to do his will. This is showcased throughout the uh, arc as the entire family is actually a force dynamic. He even goes as far as to say that uh, he wants to take Nezuko away from Tanjiro to fulfill his desires. I almost look at it like a uh, dual personality. You have the demon's original life when they were human. And then their demonic form. You can also say they have an afterlife memory as well, where all of their memories are combined and the original ones are all restored. What I would take away from this is that both characters are influenced by an outside force. I would classify Gara as being disturbed by his outside influence, which is uh, caused by Shikaku, and childhood trauma, and Rui's as a completely different person altogether because of what becoming a demon encompasses. Now, since so we got that out of the way, let's talk about what causes both of these characters anguish, which is directly affecting their current circumstances and mental state. Rui, when alive, was a very sickly child. One day, Muzan comes and blesses him with the blood. He then becomes a demon and starts to feed on humans. His parents discover him devouring a corpse and decide it's, it is time to end him. His father attacks him and he ends up being deleted by Rui first, and then Rui deletes his mother. He forgets what they said at that time to him before he uh, ended them probably because it was just his demonic instinct, although he describes it as an anger and that it causes him not to understand the words of his parents before they uh, untimely demise. For Gara, it's a lot more backstory and a lot more complicated. Granted, this is because Gara is not only a villain, but he eventually switches sides and becomes a hero. Not only that, he becomes a staple of the main cast as well. Gara was born as the one-tailed Jin Cherokee, though in part one that didn't exist yet, and I won't let any Naruto fanboy tell me otherwise, including myself. 
since I'm a fanboy. <laughs> uh, but as the host of the One Tail Beast, Shukaku, Gar is unable to sleep because if he does, Shukaku will possess his body. He suffers from constant insomnia and he is very unstable because of this. In the anime, it's shown that Gar sometimes kills indiscriminately, or he is at least defending himself from an assassination attempt or just a regular attack. This causes the villagers to become unsettled and fearful of him. He becomes ostracized and isolated from everyone but his direct kin. With this already taking the toll on him, the uncle that he cares for so much has a deep hate, resenting hatred for him. Because his sister was killed during childbirth, his sister being the San sibling's mother as well. Not only that, but his father decides that Gar is a failure of a host, and as a result, he starts sending assassins to end his life, so that the San can start over with a new Jin Cherokee. He sends Yashimaru to kill Gar, and it, it is revealed that he was re has resented Gar and hated him since his birth. This caused him to go into a rage, and the monster that we see in part one in Naruto is created. With all that being said, the similarities here should be pretty clear. Both born well, in Rui's case, he is reborn with a monster inside of uh, him, whereas Gar is born with Shukaku inside of him. Both of their parents decide they must be eliminated, both kill close relatives in a retaliation of an assassination attempt. Now let's jump to the end of their villain arcs, as I think this is the most important part of this video. Rui dominates Tanjiro and Nezuko for the most of their fight until Tanjiro unleashes his hunter Kami Kagura with the assistance of Nezuko. He is seemingly defeated, but no, Rui actually detaches his head at the last moment when his neck was being cut. Giyu shows up while Rui unleashes his strongest blood demon art, which Giyu easily dispatches and finishes Rui off with the water breathing form 11, dead calm. And he is defeated. We go to a flashback and we'll reveal what his parents really said to him before their untimely demise. And with that, the most important thing revealed here, at least for this video, is that the entire motivation, his entire longing is just to feel loved and belong to a family, which is why he created this whole false narrative with the random people masquerading as his parents and his siblings. For Gar, the end of his villain arc is when he faces Naruto and Sasuke. Yeah, Sakura was there, but uh, yeah, let's not talk about that. <laughs> uh, Sakura in part one. Gar had already begun his partial transformation. He was battling Sasuke. Sasuke fires one final Chidori, ignoring the warnings from Kakashi about his limit, and his fool collapses with the curse mark spreading over him like an uh, STD. Uh, Naruto comes in, starts fighting Gara, hilariously hits him with one of Kakashi's signature jutsus. Gara decides to allow Shikaku to control him, and Naruto summons Gamabunta. They clash, and then Gamabunta turns into the QB. They fight for a bit. Naruto wakes Gara up by headbutting him. Uh, Naruto and Gara throw hands one final time and Naruto comes out victorious. I just wanted to say I think this kind of proves my mage archetype theory of Gara because he threw a trash ass punch that had no chance of winning against uh, mo a mostly taijutsu fighter in Naruto. Naruto talk no jutsu to him and shows him that the love he now has around him is worth protecting and that he will even end Gara if he has to. This causes Gara to realize what he always wanted and that is love and specifically love of friends and family. He even apologizes to his sibling. Now, this is the biggest similarity between Rui and Gara, and what really made me want to make this mashup video, because that is the only thing both of them wanted, to feel love and warmth from those around them. We know Rui dies at this point, but this got me thinking, Gara's character arc after the Konoha invasion is sort of like a what if scenario for Rui. Like if he was able to accept and grow past his demonic hatred, he could have been an asset to the downfall of Muzan. Gara's character growth after this is one of my favorites as he comes back much, much stronger and even assists the person he nearly killed in Rock Lee with fighting the strongest member of the Sound 5, Kimimaro. Like what if Rui would have came back in the Swordsman Village arc, for example, as an asset or the final battle with Muzan and played a key role in stopping him? Like some of the other Hashiras could have been saved, you know? <laughs> um, it would have been uh, pretty interesting, at least in my opinion. Finally, for the fun part, let's talk about if these two fought. For this, the stage will be at night and location doesn't matter that much, so we will say it happens at a tuning exam, final stadium. We will say they have limited intel on one another. Let's say Gara knows Rui can't survive in the sun and Rui knows how Gara's automatic defense and how his uh, Codex Sand armor uh, work. The biggest factor to deciding the winner will boil down to the uh, attack potency, speed, and probably fight IQ. Fight IQ in a sense of when a character figures out something about the other character, how they react to the situation and what they will and can do within the realms of their abilities. For fun, the version of Gar I will use is mo the most bloodlusted one. So that is the one that fought Naruto and Sasuke. And it really doesn't matter. It's just going to be his lower moon five uh, status. As clearly, if he's still a human, that would be a joke. 
Now let's talk about speed since they are both stationary fighters. Neither will be speed blitzing the other unless you believe one is massively faster than the other. However, one portion of speed is important and that is the speed of their attacks. Basically for Rui, it's his web and how fast he can surround or slice and dice his opponent regardless of how fast his sand can grip and quickly dispose of a target. Scaling Demon Slayer's speed is kind of muddy simply because the attacks are not real. Zenitsu doesn't technically move with the speed of lightning even though it's portrayed that way. Whereas Naruto, it's a little bit easier to tell because of direct comparison throughout the series. So here's the problem. Can Rui's attacks move faster than Sasuke and Weightless Lee during the Chunin exams? Because if he can not, Gara's sand will literally tank anything he throws at him. Whereas Gara's sand reaction and attack speed would be relative to the speed to that speed, or just a little bit slower than both of them. In my opinion, they would fight for a bit, and as Rui fails to hit Gara, he will get frustrated and unleash his spinning thread blood demon arc, and Gara will use the sand to shield his entire body. Gar will then use this as an opportunity to seize a limb and rip it off. Rui will regenerate, and then Gar will use more sand to cover Rui's entire body, eventually figuring out his head is vulnerable. Use his full desert coffin and crush Rui's entire body, or he could at least detain him until the sunrise happens. In my opinion, um, Gara is 10 times more tactical than Rui would be, and definitely has a higher fight IQ. I don't think Rui's that smart at all, really. He just has more power than most people he fights. And that's how he's able to uh, dismantle, dominate, or get them to join the side by making him, you know, part of his dumb family. I just can't see within character that Rui could outsmart Gara. Even the bloodlusted one that's not as good as the one that fought Kimimaro. Because in the Kimimaro fight, he brought out way more, you know, tactics and fought very smart. Even though he almost died, he would have died, you know, in the end. But Kimimaro was actually ridiculous overpowerful part one and yeah that's the end of the video if you uh stuck around this long you must have liked the video so if you will smash that button for me and sub up if you're new and i'll see you on the next one um i was sick i'm um, in this video by the way so if i sound a little weird um yeah sorry about that not sure what i'm doing next but uh yeah that's